Are you preparing for AZ 900? 20 latest questions on AZ 900 exam coming up in this video. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. In this part 12 of AZ 900 series in 2023, we bring to you 20 latest questions on AZ 900. All our questions are well researched and supported by Microsoft documentation so that you can validate the answers and also do some self study. And also a free PDF file is waiting for you towards the end of this video containing all the questions and the answers that we are going to discuss today, a must have tool for your offline studies. And please do not miss to watch the previous parts of this series 205 latest questions already covered. And I am sure you do not want to miss even one single question. All the links are shared in the description box. So let's gear up and start preparing for AZ 900. So let's begin part 12 with question number 206. The question says a company is planning on setting up a pay as you go subscription with Microsoft Azure. Would the company have access to support forums? Yes or no? And the correct answer is yes. And this is because community support is available for all the plans, including basic developer standard and professional direct. And friends, before we move any further, I would like to say that sometimes you will witness repetition of the questions in various parts, or maybe the same question is presented in different formats. Maybe you feel that this is due to some mistake, but let me tell you very clearly, this is no mistake. It is a deliberate action that we take while designing these courses because we feel repetition will drill the concepts in your mind, the questions, their variations, and you will be able to handle the little tweaks that Microsoft do in exams. So as I always say, repetition is good for you and for your learning. And with that thought in mind, let's move to the question number 207 that says your company plans to purchase Azure support. The company's support policy states that the Azure environment must have an option to access support engineers by phone or email. You need to recommend a support plan that meets the support policy requirement. And the solution given is recommend a professional direct support plan. Does this meet the goal? Yes or no? And this one, my friends, is a correct solution. Now let's move on to the question number 208. It says a company is planning on using Azure App Service to host a set of web applications. The company has basic tier service plan and further it says does Microsoft automatically provide professional technical support services with basic support plan? Yes or no? And this one friends is an incorrect statement and that's why we have chosen a no. So Microsoft does not automatically provide professional services with basic plan and it's very important for you to be familiar and aware of the four support plan that we discussed in the previous question as well. Those are basic developer standard and professional direct and friends in case you want to get additional support outside the scope of basic support plan in that case you would need to purchase any of the other three support plans those are developer standard or professional direct and a good place to learn about all these support plans is this microsoft documentation here you can see that we have basic developers, standard and professional direct. And friends, I highly recommend reading this documentation because there will be a handful of questions around support plans in AZ 900 exam. And next we have question number 209. It says a dash cloud is a computing environment that combines public cloud and private cloud by allowing data and applications to be shared between them. Your options are public cloud, private cloud or hybrid cloud. And most definitely the correct answer is hybrid cloud. And this is because hybrid cloud as the name suggests is a combination of public cloud and private cloud. So that's why hybrid cloud is the correct answer. Now let's move on to the question number 210. It says your company has an on-premises network that contains multiple servers. The company plans to reduce the following administrative responsibilities of network administrators. The responsibilities are backing up the application data, replacing failed server hardware, managing physical server security, updating server operating system, managing permissions to the shared documents. The company plans to migrate several servers to Azure virtual machines. Now you need to identify which administrative responsibilities will be eliminated after the planned migration. Which two responsibilities should you identify? Your options are replacing failed server hardware, backing up the application data, 
managing physical server security, updating server operating system and the last one is managing permissions to the shared documents. And please note in order to get the full marks for this question, you have to select two responsibilities and the correct answer for this question is option A and option C. And this simply means that once the company moves the multiple servers from on premises to Azure network, this would free up the network administrators from the responsibilities of replacing failed server hardware and managing physical server security. And why so? Because all this will now be taken care by Microsoft Azure. Now let's move on and do some yes no kind of question. Here comes question number 211 and the first statement says that to achieve a hybrid cloud model, a company must always migrate from a private cloud model. Yes or no? And the correct answer for this statement is no. Let's move on to the next statement. It says a company can extend the capacity of its internal network by using public cloud. Yes or no? And this one is a correct statement. And the last statement says in a public cloud model, only guest users at your company can access the resources in the cloud. Yes or no? And this one is an incorrect statement. And friends, we have discussed all these statements in the previous parts. So in case you want a detailed explanation of why we have chosen these answers, please refer to the previous parts. Let's do one more yes no kind of question. Question number 212. The first statement says with software as a service or SaaS model, you must apply for software updates. Yes or no. And this one is an incorrect statement. And this is because in case of software as a service, all the software updates are taken care by the cloud provider. Moving on with the next statement, it says with infrastructure as a service or IAS, you must install the software that you want to use. Yes or no. And this one, my friends, is a correct statement. So friends, in case you're using Microsoft Azure or maybe AWS or Google GCP and you want to have more control over the software that you install, in that case, you must choose infrastructure as a service. Let's move on to the next statement. It says Azure Backup is an example of platform as a service. Yes or no? And this one, my friends, is a true statement. And here comes question number 213. Once again, yes, no kind of question. The first statement says you can create a resource group inside another resource group. Yes or no? And this one, my friends, is an incorrect statement. So basically, my friends, this statement is asking you whether you can create a nested resource group. And please remember, this is a very important Azure concept. You cannot create a resource group inside another resource group. And this essentially means that you cannot have a nested resource group. Moving on to the next statement, it says an Azure virtual machine can be in multiple resource group. Yes or no? And this one once again is an incorrect statement. So always remember friends that at any given point of time, a virtual machine can only exist in one single resource group. It cannot exist in multiple resource group at any given single point of time. Once again, a very important Azure concept. Always keep this thing in mind. Now let's move on to the third statement. It says a resource group can contain resources from multiple Azure regions. Yes or no? And this one friends is a true statement. So in a resource group, you can have resources from multiple Azure regions. So let's say that your Azure resource group reside in one Azure region. Let's pick central US for the example. Now, while your resource group is in central US, but you can still have resources from other Azure regions. For example, you can have resources from West US or East US, similarly from other European regions or any other region for that matter. So that's why we say that Azure resource group can contain resources from multiple Azure regions. And now let's do some drag and drop kind of question. Question number 214. To answer the question, you have to drag the appropriate benefit from the column on the left to its description on the right. Each benefit may be used once, more than once or not at all. So here you can see that we are given with some of the Azure services on this left hand side. And then we are also given with one line definitions on the right hand side in this answer area. Let's check out what are the Azure services. We have disaster recovery. We have geo distribution, high availability, and then we also have scalability. And what are the definitions given? The first one says increase the compute capacity of the apps in the cloud. So what according to you out of these four services given here will match this statement? Well, the correct answer is scalability. Moving on with the next definition, it says provide a content continuous user experience 
with no apparent downtime and this one for sure is high availability and the last definition says ensure that the users always have the best experience by deploying apps to all the regions wherever the users are and this can be none other than the geo distribution now let's move on to the question number 215 it says your company plans to deploy several custom applications to azure these applications will provide invoicing services to the customers of the company each application will have several prerequisite application and the services installed you need to recommend a cloud deployment solution for all the applications what should you recommend your options are software as a service platform as a service and the last one is infrastructure as a service and the correct answer to this statement is option c infrastructure as a service and friends as i just mentioned in one of the questions before that in case you want full control or more control over the softwares that you want to install in that case you would always want to go for infrastructure as a service and here comes question number 216 it says you are tasked with deploying a critical lob application which will be installed on a virtual machine to Azure. You are informed that the application deployment strategy should allow a guaranteed availability of 99.99% and you need to make sure that the strategy require as little virtual machines and availability zones as possible. The solution given is that you include two virtual machines and one availability zone in your strategy. Does this meet the goal? And this one, my friends, is an incorrect solution. And that's why no is the correct answer. So what is the correct solution? We will get to know in next few questions. So here comes one more variation of the question number 216. The question number 217 question is exactly the same. However, this time the solution says that you include one virtual machine and two availability zone in your strategy. Does this meet the goal? And this one once again is an incorrect solution. That's why we have chosen no here. And now to find out the correct answer, let's check out the third variation. And here it comes question number 218. The question once again exactly the same. The solution however says that you include two virtual machines and two availability zone in your strategy does this meet the goal yes or no and probably you have already guessed the answer the correct answer is yes and this is because in case you want the availability for 99.99 percent in that case microsoft recommend that you must have at least two virtual machines that span across minimum of two availability zones so that's why this time the solution is correct now let's move on to the question number 219 it says that you plan to deploy several azure virtual machines you need to ensure that the services running on the virtual machines are available even if one single data center fails. The solution given is that you deploy virtual machines to two or more resource group. Does this meet the goal? Yes or no? And this is an incorrect statement. And friends, you won't believe I have five variations of the same question. I have collected these all questions from various resources. So let's check all of these variations and then we will also come to know the correct answer. So here comes the second variation. This time the solution says that you deploy virtual machines to a skill set. Does this meet the goal? Yes or no? And once again, this is an incorrect solution. Let's check out the third variation. The solution this time says that you deploy virtual machines to two or more skill sets. And once again, my friends, this is an incorrect solution. Please wait. We are getting close to the solution. So here comes the fourth variation. The solution this time says that you deploy the virtual machines to two or more availability zones. Does this meet the goal? And yes, friends, this time this is a correct solution. And why this is so? Because if you install virtual machines to two or more availability zone, in this case, one of your virtual machines would still be running even if one data center fails. So that's why this is a correct solution. But wait, I said five variations. So what about the next variation? Let's find it out. So here comes the fifth variation of the same question. This time the solution says that you deploy the virtual machines to two or more regions. Does this meet the goal? Yes or no? And this time, my friends, once again, this is a correct solution. So as we saw in the previous variation, similar to the availability zone, two or more regions. In this case, also, you will have a virtual machine that is still up and running even if one single data center fails. So both the solution when you deploy virtual machines on two or more availability zone or you deploy virtual machines on two or more regions, 
both will provide you a shield in case a single data center fails. So please remember all these variations. Microsoft can really tweak the questions in the exams. And I'm sure all these variations will certainly help you in the exam. Now let's move on to the question number 224. Once again, a yes, no kind of question. The first statement says all the Azure resources deployed to a single resource group must share same Azure region. Yes or no. And this one, my friends, is an incorrect statement. And this is because one Azure resource group can have resources from multiple Azure regions. Moving on with the second statement, it says that if you assign a tag to a resource group, all the Azure resources in that resource group are assigned to the same tag. And this one, my friends, is an incorrect statement. So please remember there is no concept of tag inheritance in Microsoft Azure. And with that, let's move to the third statement. It says that if you set permissions to a resource group, all the resources in that resource group inherit the permissions. And this is a correct statement because unlike tags, the permissions are inherited by the resources in one particular resource group. So that's why this is a correct statement. And now comes question number 225. It says that you plan to implement an Azure database solution you need to implement a database solution that meets the following requirements. The first requirement is can add data concurrently from multiple regions. And the second one is can store JSON documents. Which database service should you deploy? Your options are Azure Cosmos DB, Azure SQL, Azure Database for MySQL servers. The fourth option is Azure Database for PostgreSQL Server. The fifth one is SQL Elastic Pools. And the last one is SQL Server Stretch Databases. And the correct answer to this question is option A, Azure Cosmos DB. So friends, Azure Cosmos DB is a globally distributed multi-model database service. And Cosmos DB is a great way to store unstructured and JSON data. So that's why Azure Cosmos DB fulfills both these requirements. Friends, we have always provided all the learning material absolutely free and we want to keep it that way in the coming time as well. The only thing we ask from you is a little support. So please do not close this video without liking it and subscribing to the channel. Both of these are very little steps for you, but it gives us a big support. And do share our videos with everyone who is preparing for Microsoft Azure certifications. And that was all for today. To get the free PDF file of all the 20 questions and the answers that we discussed today, you have to tell me the correct answers for the question number 209 question number 215 and question number 225. You can put your answers in the comment section below or email us at connect us at the rate thetechblackboard.com and I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.